I thought it'd be good to use this video. Now we've done a couple of working videos um, for me to explain how I got to this point, you know, of being an artist and making art and being represented by galleries. Um, so I went back to uni when I turned 40 years old. I got an opportunity to go back full time, which was brilliant. Um, I'd always looked at art, I'd always sort of, um, you know, visited exhibitions, had a look at gallery spaces, looked at what artists were doing, but I didn't really understand a lot about it. So I think the whole step towards, you know, going to uni, it's pretty scary at the time, but it was brilliant. And I think as well, the whole openness of a uni, you know, the way that you share studios and you mix everyone that's there and that was really good. But one of the biggest things for me was the workshops, the print shop, um, the sort of woodwork shop where you can make your own canvases, you know, and the library was a massive thing for me. I spent every day in the library, I was always in there. I think if you're at uni, you're mad not to use a library because everything you need to know is in there. And that's where I was most of the time. Um, so yeah, I moved into my studio at DMU. Um, got set a load of projects, started working on them. I started to do my own stuff as well, sort of on the side, but all kind of linked to the projects that I was doing through uni. And then I really enjoyed my time there, you know, three years of purely experimenting and exploring and getting feedback, which is really important, not just from university lecturers, but from friends and other students that were there at the time. So yeah, that sort of feedback really helps as an up and coming artist. So while I was at DMU, I kind of used the opportunity to get involved with a lot of different departments there. Um, I worked with the archives department downstairs in the library. If you're at DMU, go and check that out. It's absolutely amazing. So I did projects with them. I worked with the IOCT department with um, Sophie Smith and the guys that are over there. I did a project with them that was working at Phoenix Art Gallery in Leicester and I was interviewing people why they were coming to see exhibitions. They were front runner projects. So if you are a student, have a look at front runner projects because they're a brilliant thing to do. And there's always art based things that you can do, art design, architecture, whatever, there's loads. But check that out and have a look. So then, while I was at DMU, I started working for DMU Local as well, which are a team that do outreach work, not just in England, not just in Leicester. You know, they're in New York, they're in India, they're everywhere, they're all over the place. Um, and I did, I was in charge of art and design projects, reaching out into the community. And so what I did was I set up some Saturday art clubs around Leicester, four different locations around Leicester for kids. And that developed into adult clubs as well, which are still running online, hence this. Um, and yeah, when I finished at uni, I moved straight into a place called Studio Name, which is just on the edge of the cultural quarter in Leicester. And I met Stephen and Yuka, who were the two guys that run it. Um, Yuka, she's from Japan, so inspirational to talk to. Stephen, um, pushes art all the time. You know, it's people like that that we need in the art world at the minute. And they introduced me to a new space that they were gonna open. Um, and I loved it as soon as I walked in. I walked up the stairs to have a look at the space. First thing I said when I looked at it was, whatever you're doing, I want in. So um, between us, we sort of got the studio up and running and I was taking on a studio manager, so it was my job to kind of promote the space, get artists to move in. And now, you know, four years on, we've got 30 artists, gallery space, screen print workshop, glass blowing workshop, trying to expand into ceramics at the minute. Come and see us, we're on Brougham Street in Leicester. Search us up, studio name. And on the back of that, I started to do um, the affordable art fair with other artists. And we did affordable art fair for a couple of years. 
we're still doing it, but this year obviously it's all being on hold, so we're not sure what's going to happen. But an art fair is an amazing place to go and work as an artist and present your work and get feedback from collectors, curators, gallery owners, the general public. You speak to everyone that comes through the door at an art fair and they will give you honest feedback on your work and you've got to take it on the shoulders. But as a learning curve, it's fantastic and it's fun. If you get a chance to do an art fair, do it. It's really good, man. Um, but while this was all going on, I was approached by two galleries in Los Angeles um, who got in touch totally out of the blue. An email arrived and said, we really like your work, could you send some over and um, we'll promote it through the gallery. And when you get an email like that, to be honest, I was a bit dubious about you know, shipping off work to an address in Los Angeles and you know, never seeing it again. I've sent work to London or I've taken work to London, visited the gallery, met the owners, and you know, got that sort of thing. But when it's overseas, you kind of got to have a bit of faith the way you're sending your, um, your artworks to. So if you get that opportunity, research who they are, make sure they've got a good standing in the art world and that they're doing the job they should be doing. And if everything works out, then it is, it's a brilliant thing to do. So while I was doing all the projects in Leicester, still working for DMU Local, running the studio, I had exhibitions at LCB Depot. If you're a student at DMU, hunt that space out and go and have a look at it. It's in the cultural quarter. Uh, the guys down there gave me the gallery space a few times and I could, they pretty much said, do what you want. In my first exhibition, I built a skate park and all, this, all the paintings in there were really big abstracts. Um, and they looked at all the street spots that I used to skate in Leicester and you know I built a quarter pipe, a little street section and on the opening night we had a bit of a skate session so that was really good and my second exhibition there I built a big painting that you could walk into and be photographed in so that was really cool and the LCB guys always support Leicester artists so they're well worth you know following and getting in touch with and then the gallery in LA offered me um, a solo show. So they'd been going for a few years, they were getting recognized in the art world, and they offered me the first solo show in the gallery, so that was a real, a real honor. And then I went out there for a few weeks, um, enjoyed that whole LA lifestyle, which was fantastic, and had the exhibition, which was amazing. And now I'm busy at Studio Name. You know, obviously I'm at my home studio at the minute because we're all on lockdown, which is, you know, it's kind of keep us out of the studio, which is a bit of a pain. But, you know, I've not stopped working through this whole thing. I've kind of always had a real big work ethic and I'm lucky to have a space that I can paint big stuff in. But if I didn't, I'd be working on my kitchen table. And if I couldn't do that, I'd be working on my knee and making art. You know, as an artist, I think you've got to completely push and drive forward whatever idea it is you've got in your head. You know, this new series that I'm working on at the minute is all about um, the lockdown situation and the way that that's affected me and my family and the thoughts I have at night when I go to sleep and the way it's kind of, you know, changed everything and how we look at it. Well, last trace of light, it's, it's kind of those thoughts that come to you just before you sleep at night. And I think with the, the current situation that we're in at the minute, you know, it's made me see things a bit different and that's what I've been trying to show in this latest body of work. One, don't stop making work. Always be looking at what you're gonna do next. Plan, keep notes, make drawings, 
whatever. Keep that creative thing going because if it stops, it's hard to get going again. Sometimes you need a break, but don't let it be too long. I'd say also grow your connections. You know, visit museums, galleries, exhibitions, shows, and speak to the artists and the gallery owners when you're there. Um, you build that sort of connectivity in the art world and it pays back loads. You know, you get invited to be in shows, you get invited to go to private views where you meet someone else that want, likes your work and they want to put it in a show. Grow that connection phase, you know, you've got to do it. Without connections, you won't get anywhere in the art world. Get your work out there. If you're, you could be making the best work if you're just making it and putting it under your bed and not showing it, putting it online, sharing it with galleries, um, sharing it with other artists, it's not going to go anywhere. And yeah, the final thing, I think, educate yourself. Um, not everyone can go to uni, you know, not everyone wants to go to uni. But that doesn't mean that you can't read. Everything's online now. You can visit exhibitions gallery shows all online like you're actually in there there's VR rooms on every major art site now so you can visit the latest exhibition in New York from you know your sofa